Hello. Um, so this is, you are not a live audience hearing or watching this uh, because this is recorded. Uh, I just did a live stream on Twitch and it appears I was uh, not up to date on how the, the Twitch features. I haven't been stream for a year. And uh, so it turns out that uh, I need to check a box in order for Twitch to store your video now. So we're going to do it again. And uh, so welcome to the uh, third Thursday Tertulia, the inaugural, uh, still on the first night, um, the second take of the inaugural third Thursday Tertulia, December 21st, 2023. Shout out to my friend Mel, who uh, introduced the word Tertulia to me. I was not, uh, I was ignorant of its meaning and uh, I looked and then it's like a, uh, it's like a French salon. It's like an artistic uh, or gathering of, uh, of fans of uh, literature and the arts. And so that's what we're gonna do tonight is we're going to uh, do some poetry. Um, so starting with um, first poem, it's called uh, Dunk Test O De Century. Gordon versus Jones, same city as Neek and MJ. New Dunctuary. Okay, and that's, uh, it's not a new poem, but it is a revised version of an earlier poem. And I actually used, uh, collaborated with um, an artificial intelligence or AI uh, tool for that. Uh, it was, uh, I used uh, Chat GPT, which GPT is a generative pre-trained transformer, which you probably already know. Uh, from uh, OpenAI, and uh, so I had the, uh, I asked ChatGPT to read the poem, the original version, and it had, uh, it did, it broke it down, and then, you know, commentary include, uh, overall, the poem appears to be a brief commentary on a basketball-related conflict or controversy with a playful twist in the form of a made-up word. The lack of specific details about the conflict or the individuals involved leave room for interpretation and imagination on the part of the reader. I asked if it was a haiku, and it said no, because it didn't conform to the 575 syllable structure. And then uh, originally the the uh, that had five, it was a 594. And then so we worked with it and we got down to 575. And after that, I asked it to analyze it again. And was it a, uh, was it a haiku? And it said no because uh, it didn't conform. And then I was like, what? We just, we just worked on this. And then uh, ChatGPT uh, apologized. It said, you know, that it, it was wrong, that uh, the third, that it was a 575, and it, uh, it fell, it, uh, yeah, we all make mistakes. Most of us do, I should say. Um, and uh, so that not all of us apologize. Kudos to ChatGPT for that, um, and for helping me out. And then, all right, next poem. <clears throat> this is water. Eventually, as the water reflection moved, I realized I was also moving as a person standing on our spaceship. And if you're listening or uh, reading at home after this, you know, feel free to applaud. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm doing a bow if you're just listening afterwards. Bow from my chair. All right. Uh, now we're gonna switch it up. Do some fiction. Thwap is the sound white horse had popping into Dottie's brown left hand and mitt makes for both out number three and the notification of the loop will restart soon. No matter what, I'm transported back to the beginning of the inning with zero outs on the scoreboard. I lost count, but I know I've been through it hundreds, I don't think it's thousands, of times. Whether the pitcher throws a perfect inning or we give up a dozen runs. By the time that third inevitable out comes, I look up to see the butt that will end me. It's a butt the size of a baseball stadium. Before your imagination runs too far thinking that maybe someone you know, let me say it straight. You see, while we are playing our game with sticks and balls, there is something else afoot in our fair metropolis. Some giant black and white monster or kaiju to those in the know. Liger S hybrid of the species that make up Barney and Godzilla, who goes by Dinagon for short, is actually fighting to save humanity. Its opponent is this massive Pacific Rim Gundam Metal Gear Solid pink mech robot thing from the other side of the galaxy that needs humans out of the way to mine the planet. 
It's taken me a while to get the narrative straight. I'm pretty sure those are the sides. So yeah, as I mentioned, as soon as one, me or one of my teammates catches the ball for the third out, subsequently the bad guy robot lands a punch that makes our fair Dinagon fall on top of the stadium, but first killing us all instantly. I've tried removing myself from the game by walking off the field or other more gruesome methods better suited for horror movies and it never changes anything. Whether I die before everyone else in the stadium or simultaneously, the loop restarts when we have zero outs on the scoreboard. My latest hope is that writing about this will break the cycle. Maybe I went through all of this just to force me to sit down and write something for you to read or listen to at the Unreal 5th Anniversary Show. The ball does hit glove. Come on, Dinagon. Beat the robot this time. And for those of you who are... For those of you who are unfamiliar, um, the Unreal was a... Uh, is, well, is or was a... Uh, live uh, fiction event uh, in Chicago. I'm broadcasting from Chicago. And uh, a lot of live poetry nights, uh, but live fiction, uh, not as many as this was, uh, you could uh, read short stories uh, or par portions of longer stories. And I uh, came across this uh, group during the part of the pandemic where we were you know, at home most of the time. And it was, uh, yeah, it was a nice group of people to find and uh, artistic outlet. And then speaking of my fiction, uh, you know, you can, uh, if you want, it'd be great if you, uh, you know, bought and or uh, read some of my work. And um, if you want to uh, buy it, uh, my debut novella, uh, Kui, is John 146 Sexy, um, is on Amazon Kindle. If you search uh, Sexy, C S <clears throat> Sex Sexy, S U C X S C X Y, S U C S C X Y, Danoff. Um, in uh, DuckDuckGo or some other browser, then uh, some other search engine, then uh, it'll come to it on Amazon. Or um, or if you want to, you know, for free, if you go to Danoff, www.danoff, D-A-N-O-F-F dot org uh, slash caddy, that HTML, that's www.danoff dot O-R-G slash C-A-D-D-Y dot HTML, you'll find my a short story, uh, a caddy story, both of those uh, are from Annabelle's universe. All right, <clears throat> another uh, another new poem tonight. This one is named uh, "Who Imitates Who." Dear Art, do you still read letters? I hope an anthropomorphic version of you is able to answer yes, because otherwise this epistolary poem is kind of silly. As for myself, I'm often excited to receive letters, but then sometimes put them aside to open later. And maybe a few months or never. What are your thoughts on artificial intelligence? Do you think it is lesser or greater than the art us humans make? Should a human artist view AI as a threat? I mean, certainly AI should give credit to artists whose work it utilizes as training data, but, or should humans be excited about finally having non-humans that can go create art of ec? Or were animals and plants already participating? Oh yeah, chimpanzees have been painting for decades. Or if AI could work with those chimps on a painting, could they communicate in sign language? Can humans and AI reach a level of agreement like humans have with some animals? Would there be domesticated AI and wild AI? Reminds me of domesticated agents and rogue programs that were, became werewolves in Matrix Reloaded. On topic of art and its connections, do you remember when T.S. Eliot wrote that life imitates art? I did, but it turns out that was another manufactured memory. It was actually Oscar Wilde, which I learned thanks to Wikipedia, quote, Antimimesis is a philosophical position that holds the direct opposite of Aristotelian mimesis. Its most notable proponent is Oscar Wilde, who opined in his 1889 essay, The Decay of Lying, that life imitates art far more than art imitates life. One example from my own life was that as I started reading Chapter 8 of Bedrock Faith, that it starts... The following Monday, Mrs. Motley, Mr. McTeer, and the Powells left for their annual vacation to Michigan. The day before my own trip to the Glove State. <clears throat> Who do you think imitates? Or has it become more of a blend since the days of Mr. Wild? When I do my renowned rendition of Dido tracks during karaoke, is there any imitation between life and art? When I win yet another championship in franchise mode of NBA 2K21, what's the imitation at that moment? When Young Thug has his rap lyrics read against him as evidence in court, art certainly impacts life. Music has inspired, inspired soldiers to fight and die in war for thousands of years, and those soldiers sometimes end up as characters in artistic movies about them. 
Our art and life, like yin and yang, are night and day, different expressions intertwined. Even though you can't see the stars during the day because of the sun, aren't they still out there? There's a lyric, did you ever see a star shop sign? <clears throat> did you ever see a star shop <clears throat> Did you ever see a star shop signing? Shining from the track Apply the Pressure by Memba that came out in the months I've been writing this poem. Line from True Detective. There's a line from True Detective where Russ comments about the sky and how light, light winning against the dark. And a Mike's and Mem, a member of Wu-Tang, discusses how art and culture influence each other. And back to AI. If art influences human decisions and AI can make art, may it also influence our culture? Has it already? And how does AI fit into the life art imitation debate? Is one or the other a new player? Well, I've included a lot of questions for you in this letter, Art. I hope you respond. Sincerely, your lifelong student. Hey, um, and, uh, and if you're listening, please, uh, watching, please, uh, please consider following me on social, um, on Mastodon, uh, at Danoff, Mastodon.social, uh, tune in my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash cdanoff for, uh, live streams. And, uh, I'm also on Tumblr, uh, Charlie, Charlie Sensei, uh, hyphen blog.tumblr.com. And uh, I use Wikipedia. And so if you want to you know, reach out to me there, you can find me as user Charles Jeffrey underscore Jeffrey Charles underscore Jeffrey underscore Danoff. And then I'll put this uh, video on my, on my website and on YouTube. Um, I'm going to put the podcast out as well. First, I'm doing uh, my own uh, artistic podcast. Um, and I was hoping to get into the live streaming for, the, for this first recording with the value for value option, uh, podcasting 2.0. But uh, I didn't. I didn't quite get it done. But uh, thank you to Douglas of RSSBlue.com for helping out and trying to get me there, and uh, Mitch Downey of Podverse uh, for the for the assist as well um, and the inspiration. Um, and uh, Mitch is who I learned about value for value from. And if you're not familiar, value for value is a way that uh, while you're listening to to something, uh, whether a podcast or an album, you can send uh, satoshis, which is a version of Bitcoin. You can send currency to the, the creator and or their guests. Um, so if it's a podcast interview, it'll get split between people as decided by the owner of the podcast or um, if they're like, it's a DJ and the, there's, art, there's other artists playing. Um, so there'll be a link to the uh, podcast and the video on my website, danoff.org. And uh, please tune in for upcoming episodes. Um, Thursday, uh, February 22nd, and uh, Thursday, April 25th. Those will be the, this will be the three episodes for season one. And uh, the 2023-2024 season, uh, those two will be in 2024. And um, at least one of them, I hope to have an in-person event in Chicago. And given this, it's Tertulia, uh, to quote Wikipedia again, a social gathering with literary artistic overtones, especially in Iberia or in Spanish America. Uh, I'm hoping to have other artists participate in the coming episodes. Um, we had multiple artists for the Petite Soirees uh, from the Uncertainty Principle, for those uh, who attended those. And uh, Uncertainty Principle Zine, uh, my, a zine of mine, a long, long sabbatical. Um, hopefully to come back in 2024 as well. Uh, but anyway, but for the third Thursday Tertulia, after those two episodes, I'm going to break for the summer. And based on audience interest uh, and reception, decide if we're going to have a season two. All right. Um, now, uh, close with a not a new poem. Uh, you're familiar for for uh, fans of my poetry. The title is "Thank You Poem." Folly Mander. Arigato. She she. Merci. What is the value of a thank you? Why is the concept part of so many different languages and cultures? Do you think the words have some sort of magical power? In a stressful or confusing situation, do the words act like grease to remove the squeak from the wheel? Does the thank you lose its value if the person saying it, writing it, doesn't actually want to thank you? If they're only doing it because it's part of their job or cultural expectation? Do you mean it when you say it? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But trust in my authenticity now when I say it the fullness of my being. Thank you for listening and or reading.